how to prepare for the MMI without memorizing any sample questions. Hey, BMO Nation, welcome to another episode of our One Question Podcast. My name is Ronza and I'm joined with Mang. Hey, everyone. Now we have nothing to sell you, it's just your strategies and tips. So everyone has equal access to education, of course. If you've never watched or listened to one of these before, they are completely unscripted. So there's no audio, fancy visuals or anything of that nature. It's just pure content. We have 10 minutes to tackle a new topic each week. And this week's topic is how to prepare for the MMI without memorizing any sample questions. All right, let me set the timer here, Meng, and we're good to go. Now. This is probably one of the most exciting topics that we we, we love addressing because <laughs> there's so much to unpack here. Um, I think it's very important to first um, highlight the types of questions that you might receive on an MMI. And then Meng, I'll pass it over to you to really break down, how is this possible? Like, how can you actually do this without memorizing? I know that the MMI itself could be very overwhelming, for a lot of individuals um, that have never taken it or, you know, been invited to one before, or even if they've done it, they haven't done well and they have to revisit it again. So there's lots to note down here. Um, in terms of the types of questions that you might receive for the MMI, you know, it really can be categorized. Yes, they can vary in the nature, but they could really be categorized in the most common being scenario type questions, right? Everyday type questions that you might receive um, in terms of policy or hot topic types questions, right? What's relevant? What's your opinion? What's your stake? Now, it's very important. And we'll go into it later on as to why these types of questions are being asked. But first, let's note down the types of questions you might receive. Now, in terms of personal type questions, obviously, asking you about an experience, asking about your opinion, it could be quirky also, throwing you for a loop, you know, mm -hmm. um, different, different phrasing, or just asking you a question that, you know, someone says, if you um, could write a book, what would it be about, you know, just kind of throwing you off guard. Um, of course, you might also receive acting based questions. These are always very fun. And I always tell our students that they're very similar to scenario type questions. It's just... Um, an unfolding scenario and you're a part of it, you're a character in it. Um, in terms of any task-based task uh, style questions, a lot of students might receive those too. Now, sometimes they're individual-based where essentially you might receive a task and you go in and you have to solve it. At times it could even be a collaboration station where you have to work with others to solve um, a task or a problem uh, at, at the station that you've been given. So I think those are the predominant ones that we've seen. So scenario, policy, personal, task-based, and acting. Anything else could be a variation or sort of like a hybrid of those. But mm -hmm. I don't want you to kind of focus on that because when we go into the strategies, it'll make sense that it really doesn't matter in the end. If you could just identify briefly the type or their aim, then you could actually go into it. So, all right, that's the type of questions you might receive. Meng, let's just jump into it. How can we do this? Let's let's start off with scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, scenario questions, uh, like you had mentioned, Franza, they are they give you a scenario. They're giving you a role. Their purpose is to see whether you can respond to different types of challenging situations maturely, professionally. Uh, they're looking at your soft skills, your interpersonal skills, your ability to be objective in any kind of situation, to have empathy towards others, um, and to plan strategically, right? They want to see your ability to come up with solutions to problem solve, to resolve conflicts, those kinds of skills. So you can really anticipate scenario questions ranging on a broad variety of topics and themes um, from professional boundaries to um, uh, confidentiality, um, uh, kind of ethical dilemmas, all kinds of things, whatever you can imagine, any kind of scenario that you can think of um, that might arise in real life, in the professional setting, in the educational setting, anything is possible. So it can be quite daunting. You definitely don't wanna be memorizing questions because then the next question that you get, you're not gonna be able to come up with a great answer to. The best way to do this is to have a single strategy for all questions that could be categorized as a scenario question. Uh, and what we recommend, and this really can be applied to basically all scenario questions, is that you start off 
by identifying the pressing issue, you want to know who's going to be impacted uh, um, directly, also indirectly, and then you want to go ahead and start figuring out what pieces of information are missing that you have not been given. You definitely don't want to make any assumptions. You don't want to fill in the gaps with your own ideas. You just want to explicitly state what information you want to gather and how you want to gather that information, whether it's talking to another individual or it's doing a little bit of research yourself. And then once you've thought about the kinds of information that could be given, then you can start to give solutions ranging from what you would do in the best case scenario to what you would do in the worst case scenario. And that showcases your range as well, right? I'm not gonna make any assumptions. In the best case, this is how I would respond. But if it's the worst case scenario based on my information gathering, then I'm professional and mature enough to still handle that. Uh, in a manner that does take care of all those people that I identified would be impacted by either what's happened or by my own decisions. Awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, that's all very great tip. Now, some might say, okay, I know scenario, I, I kind of get that. Uh, but what about policy? Like, I'm so intimidated. I'm, you know, I didn't take politics. I, I don't understand how, why do they even care about what I have to say? Uh, with regards to that? What, what, what can we tell our students? Mm -hmm. So in terms of policy questions, they're not expecting um, a, an expert level uh, background knowledge from any of the applicants. Uh, that's not the purpose. It's not a test of your knowledge. Those are kinds of things that you will learn more about probably in your program, um, and especially if they're relevant to your field. What they really want to see is that you have a general awareness of um, what's going on in the world, right? You're someone who generally follows the news about the big topics that are happening and that you can formulate your own ideas about those topics based on an objective approach to evaluating the evidence, right? Evidence-based approach is something that is highly valued um, in any kind of healthcare profession or in any kind of profession, to be honest. So that's what they're really looking for is someone who can weigh the pros and cons and to formulate um, a reasonable conclusion about the information. So the way to approach a question like this is first of all, to state your awareness about the topic itself, whatever it may be, it can be a very short statement, um, but then to go into the advantages and disadvantages, uh, the pros, the cons, right? Basically the idea here is that you wanna present information that you know from both sides, acknowledging that even though one, one population might think this way, another population might have you know, other considerations. And it's this ability to consider both sides that makes your answer really nice and objective. And then to weigh those two sides, what you've talked about, and to come up with your own stance. Notice that the stance doesn't come first. That's one of the big errors that people make with policy questions is they come out and they say what they think about the policy first. Um, and you will do that. You don't even have to hedge about that. You can have a even like a slightly strong stance on something as long as you have presented both sides first and you have backed up your stance with, um, um, with those arguments, right? So once you've stated your stance, then you can go ahead and hopefully be able to propose either some modifications or some alternatives uh, to address the other side. Right, that you have not aligned yourself with. Absolutely, I cannot agree anymore. So there you have it. You do not need to be a politician. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, stay up to date on what's happening, current, oh, relevant, yeah. whether it's reading the newspaper or just you know your favorite news source. Just stay up to date on things that are current and relevant. Now, in terms of personal type questions, I know that students are especially intimidated by these because there's multiple types of questions mm -hmm. you can ask. I can't possibly memorize every type of response, what would you say here, Meg? Yeah, these questions, what their goal is, is to glean into your personal skills, your personal values. They wanna see who you are based on your experiences. So um, the, the way you wanna approach these questions is to 
briefly, concisely summarize what the experience is. It has to be relevant to the question. And then to say what you learn from that experience, especially if it's a negatively charged experience, if it was a challenge or an obstacle that you faced or something you regretted. And then you wanna talk about the application of all of those things that you gained from the experience, whether that be your skills or values. Right. So, so that's what, what it's all about. It's about linking your past experiences with who you are now and then linking who you are now with who um, um, the way that it would apply to your future education or career. Thank you so much, Meng. That's actually time. That's perfect. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Now, if you like this as much as we enjoyed making it for you, go ahead and share it with a friend. Subscribe, of course, so you don't miss a future episode. And do ask any questions that you might have in the comment section. Until then, see you next time, everyone. Bye.